The European Union caused more trouble in Northern Ireland, the EU ambassador demands that Britain rejoin the single market, and the Labour Party continues to tear itself apart. Hello everyone and welcome to the second program of the day. As we said in the previous video, it's been an interesting last few days, but the European Union are quite busy. They don't care about our elections right now. They just care about uh, making more, uh, well, not just trouble, but in terms of division inside the United Kingdom. They are also publicly going, going around across the European media pretending to be on the side of Northern Ireland for some reason. But the latest we have is that Brussels have now rejected the UK compromise over the Northern Ireland Protocol. As you guys know, ever since the transition period ended and the Brexit Britain started, the European Union did not make things easy between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK because in just for the sake of obviously making sure that the border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland is you know smooth and secure and everything's fine, then we have a problem because the Irish Sea is now seeing an invisible border between Great Britain and Northern Ireland and the EU bureaucrats, they promised to make things smooth. They promised that it's not going to affect things between uh, GB and NI. Clearly, that was a lie. That's why we've seen some issues. I'm going to give you the latest update on this and also what we are actually hearing from the EU ambassador. Uh, the European Commission have not rejected the UK's compromise proposal. Uh, so the problem they have is food safety and animal health. The issues of food safety and animal health is so irrelevant. They're using this as a political tool. We were a member of the European Union for decades and we continue to have high standards, actually at times higher than the European Union and the majority of the developed world, yet they are saying that we don't trust your food standards coming from Great Britain, so we're going to actually block it uh, and you can't even use it in Northern Ireland. Even though Northern Ireland is part of your country, we're going to stop you from trading inside your own country. Now, the British government have been pressing the EU to adopt a risk uh, assessment approach to managing large volumes of food of animal origins entering Northern Ireland from Great Britain under the terms of their protocol. Now, the European Union don't like this because what they want to do is that, uh, obviously, it's concluded that allowing more flexible um, situations with the actual trades being uh, transferred between GB and Northern Ireland, it would apparently jeopardize and undermine the European Union's own body of rules on food safety and animal health. What? As we said, both sides know that the uh, British government continues to have high standards, uh, whether it's on food safety, health and safety, animal rights. Yet, apparently, if you go with, according to the actual Northern Ireland Protocol, if you go with what Boris Johnson's government are saying, that just have a risk assessment approach, and, you know, you just deal with it case by case, everything will be fine, you just you continue to do your checks, apparently it undermines the European Union's body. I mean, what? It makes absolutely no sense because the idea that you currently have the Eurocrats uh, writing up all these weird regulations on a daily basis, adding more, how can the Brexit trade deal uh, adapt to this? Why not just have us as a member of the European Union? That might be easier to just have in a trade deal. That's why I was not really in favour of any sort of trade deal because the European Union don't believe in free trade. They believe in cooperation as long as you follow the EU rules. Now, in response, the EU is reviving the idea that the UK should align with the EU's food safety rules, possibly on a temporary basis. Uh, yeah, sure, because that's the only way to fix things. Let's just uh, allow the UK to rejoin the customs union, the single market, and everything else that the European Union have, and just forget about Brexit. You know, but yeah, we could just have Brexit in name only, because they say a temporary basis. They don't mean temporary. They would ideally have Britain uh, and Northern Ireland to actually be a permanent member of their regulations. That would be a lot easier for Brussels, wouldn't it? We know exactly what they want. Now, under the protocol, Northern Ireland remains within the EU's single market for goods, meaning that it will continue to apply EU food safety rules and apply those rules to food products entering from Great Britain. This is exactly why we always had a problem with the Northern Ireland Protocol, not necessarily because the um, NI will be inside the uh, single market, not necessarily for that. If, if it helps to keep things smooth between the Republic and Northern Ireland, I'm fine with it. They promised to make things smooth between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and they lied because they said as long as there's a trade deal, then of course, 
goods will be uh, able to transfer smoothly between both sides. But clearly that was also a massive lie. Now, the Northern Ireland Protocol, another problem, is that it means that chilled meats, including sausages, mince, pies, and unfrozen prepared meals containing meat, would be prohibited from actually entering Northern Ireland from Great Britain. So two sides of the same country, you can't actually transfer chilled meats. It's just been banned. That's just normal, right? Now, the, the latter prohibition was waived for six months, thanks to an agreement between uh, Brussels and London last December. And uh, also the government decided to, UK government, decided to extend the grace period unilaterally. This is why the EU are taking the UK to court. Because the UK government want to keep uh, trade smooth between both sides. I thought the European Union were in favour of smooth trade, free trade. And also, I thought they were in favour of Northern Ireland. That's what they say. The EU delegation UK's Twitter account, uh, which is basically on behalf of the EU ambassador to the UK, actually said, because he was talking to the Financial Times, and they said, we have a political and even an emotional commitment to Northern Ireland. Well, that's a lie, because your actions are not showing that. He says, we're not here to complicate the lives of people and businesses in Northern Ireland. Really? That's literally what you're doing. You're taking the UK government to court because you want to make things complicated for people and businesses in Northern Ireland. He continues by saying that the ideal solution to reduce border friction on the UK NI trade would be for the UK to align to the EU's SPS rules. We are definitely committed to finding solutions. Yeah, let's just join the single market and customs union and everything else. That's the best way to do it. Apparently, according to the ambassador, this is the only way to have a solution and then we could explore other solutions. Maybe a membership of the European Union. That would be interesting, right? Now, this guy actually, who's a very, very... Uh, the whole idea of this EU delegation to the UK, which is they wanted to have a, an actual embassy with full of, like, Eurocrats. Uh, the UK recognised the EU delegation to the UK, uh, which I still think is idiotic. It shouldn't really... I mean, the EU is not a country. It should not be a country. That's why it's not real ambassadors in that sense. Uh, the diplomats, in, you know, they have different status, but... Uh, they are very proud that the British government recognised their status, yet they're not willing to play ball. And it's fascinating how the EU always take advantage. Now, luckily, we have an opposition party in this country who could actually hold our government to account to make sure that the government do a better job. We have opposition somewhere. Where are they? Oh, here, there we go. That's Sakia Starmer, who has lost his all the elections, most of them, apart from London, and a couple of others. Actually, they did quite well in Wales, but that doesn't count because they have a different leader in Wales. Uh, Sakir Starmer, who had a terrible week and weekends right now, is too busy uh, shifting the blame for everything that's happened this week onto everybody else. First, he's fired Angela Rayner. I have no idea what she did. <laughs> I'm not even a fan of Angela Rayner, uh, but as deputy, unless something happened behind the scenes, uh, it is slightly weird and odd that he would randomly fire her. Because if it's just because she's a Corbynista, there are a number of others. But he, apparently he's also planning to uh, sack um, Annalise uh, D uh, Dart. Uh, uh, there are a number of actually uh, names that could be replaced by some of the Blurites and Brownites, like Yvette Cooper. I don't think this is about Corbynism. I don't think this is actually even about Blurism. It's just about Sakir Starmer not knowing what he's actually doing. He is very professional very mature, very forensic. But in 2015, 17th of May, so in about a week from now, 2015, this is a tweet we got from Sakia Starmer. I am very flattered by the hashtag care for leader initiative and thanks for so many supportive messages. But Labour needs uh, someone with a more political experience. This was Sakia Starmer's advice for candidates for leadership of the Labour Party only a few years ago. I wish that Starmer would actually listen to his own advice right now because the government needs proper opposition to hold them to account with the European Union issue, with everything else that's happening right now, but I'm just concerned about Northern Ireland, so I'm focusing on that issue right now. And Starmer, who only a few years ago said that he doesn't have enough political experience, since then, the only experience he received was being part of the uh, second referendum for uh, Brexit. That's the only experience he has since then. He was the architect of 
the People's Vote campaign uh, for the Labour Party. And this is why Tony Blair is coming back <laughs> every day. This guy finds an excuse to come on TV. Uh, and apparently they're saying that he's hostile towards Sakir Starmer. I'm sure Blairites would love to take over the Labour Party, just like how Corbynistas are really, really desperate to take back control of the Labour Party. But the fact that Blair is hostile towards Starmer is not a good sign. The last time Blair was hostile towards someone was back in 20, 2003. That did not end well. So Starmer needs to actually get his act together, either resign or sort out his party and also find some new sound policies and proper management style to see what we're dealing with. Because right now, Labour is irrelevant and people don't care about the Labour Party. This is the latest that we have. This uh, Northern Ireland uh, crisis is going to continue. The European Union will continue to go across the media outlet pla um, um, platforms and pretend to be on the side of Northern Ireland, pretend to care about the Good Friday Agreement and peace, yet they're going to cause more trouble. So subscribe to the channel and don't forget to become a member of this channel to support us and also get a lot in return, including our weekly Q&As and also regular video calls and the Sunday newsletters which should be sent out earlier today so definitely become a member and sign up to our newsletters thanks again for watching i'm mario tc and i'll see you guys in the next video